was a male Eton, 92 years old. I am before you today to speak on voting rights. Seven decades ago, under Jim Crow, they made Rosanelle Eaton recite the preamble of the U.S. Constitution to qualify to vote. Without missing a word, I did it. Now she's in a new war, fighting against a strict voter photo ID law, a powder keg issue in many states. I am fed up. This is Moral Monday, a grassroots movement organized by the Reverend William Barber, an echo of the civil rights movement that won black voting rights back in the 1960s. Tensions are at fever pitch. Demonstrators occupy the state capitol, trying to stop passage of a new law that threatens black voting rights. And they get arrested by the busload. But Republicans who control state government pour on more restrictions. Simply bring your North Carolina driver's license or identification card. We've got a good bill. We've got a bill that ensures integrity of the voting place. It increases voter turnout. It increases voter integrity. If we look at this bill in its totality, it's all about suppressing the vote. You see those children up there? Those children have been there for the last three hours with tapes around them because they understand what this bill has the potential to do, which is take their voice away. Republican supermajorities steamroll passage, and in August 2013, Governor Pat McCrory signs the tough new voting law. The integrity of our election process is vital to our democracy, which is why I've signed today several common sense reforms into law, including voter ID. It was not a photo ID, it was a monster mean-spirited, manipulative, very cynical voter suppression bill, the likes of which we had not seen since Jim Crow. Absolutely a backlash from the white Republican majority in the state legislature against what we had seen black voting strength do in previous elections. I need you, North Carolina. In 2008, black voters ensured that Barack Obama won North Carolina in that presidential election. Their political power was increasing. Allison Riggs, an attorney for the Southern Coalition for Social Justice, sued the state, arguing in court that the photo ID law was unconstitutional. We put on extensive evidence about um, each provision of the bill and how it would disproportionately impact voters of color. And we put on evidence that the legislature knew about those disproportionate impacts as they designed the bill. They changed the photo ID requirement to keep IDs that white voters most likely had and to get rid of the kind of IDs that black voters were more likely to have. And same thing with same day registration, early voting, out of precinct voting, voting tools more likely to be used by voters of color. Legislative leaders insisted they were fighting voter fraud. The opportunity to commit fraud was so easy and it would have been foolish to assume that somebody at some point, even if they had not tried it in the past, would try it in the future. During the trial, there was no evidence of voter fraud in North Carolina presented by the state. Instead, evidence showed that 300,000 voters were suddenly disqualified because they lacked proper state ID. And the requirements included a birth certificate, which automatically would disenfranchise a large number of African Americans uh, who were born in segregation by midwives or at home, where uh, 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 birth certificates were not issued. Now, Rosanelle Eaton, 94 years old at the time, granddaughter of a slave, a voting rights activist back in the 1960s, ran into all kinds of problems, ran into a runaround. Do you remember any of her testimony, the gist of her testimony? Rosanelle Eaton testified at trial that it took her roughly almost a month 
to go through all of the hurdles necessary to change documents that had incorrectly spelled her name. A district judge upheld the photo ID law. Then in July 2016, a three-judge appeals court struck it down as unconstitutional, declaring that the law's provisions target African Americans with almost surgical precision for partisan Republican advantage. For Moral Monday, it was a decisive victory. Forward together. Not one step back. Even so, the reform movement faced restricted access to early voting by Republican-controlled county election boards. Many of the counties chose not to have Sunday voting. They chose not to have more than one site. Stand up, fight back! Protesters appealed to the State Board of Elections. Big cities got more polling sites. Some areas got Sunday voting for souls to the polls, marching straight from Sunday services to polling sites. In North Carolina Republicans are talking about a way to bring back photo ID through a popular referendum. I put nothing past this legislature. They are losing, they have lost. History is against them and they just can't seem to come on into the 21st century. We will never stop battling. And when we're willing to put our bodies on the line, when we're willing to dust off the Constitution and go into the courts, we can win. Hope you enjoyed our video and you'll share it with others. To see more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on that little button down there Hope to see you again soon.